Lesson three, why charting and technical analysis is the most inclusive way to trade. So now we've learned the principles of technical analysis, but there's a lot of people and scholars, academics out there who question the validity of technical analysis. I myself went to school, got my degree in finance, and hung my hat on the fundamental analysis of stock markets. As I mentioned before, I used to be a financial advisor. Now, fundamental analysis definitely throws some shade at technical analysis because how can you know what to invest in by looking at a bunch of numbers? Well, in fundamental analysis, basically, the fundamental analyst is looking at a bunch of numbers using past performance of said company to make future predictions of said company. That is exactly what a technical analyst does, except a technical analyst doesn't look at fundamental things. A technical analyst looks at price action history and volume to make their predictions. If you believe in the first primary principle of technical analysis, that's markets discount everything, and the price is now, is the perfect price that the security is, then you would argue that the only true evidence and data that a stock has at this very moment is the price that it is. Whether or not a fundamental analyst is to buy or to sell, a technical analyst will tell you when to buy or when to sell. In addition, the markets tend to price in everything future events included. Therefore, many bull markets have started during a recession because, as many market participants know, the stock market is forward-looking. Therefore, in times of recessions, a stock market can be bullish. During the great pandemic of 2020 in our country and, of course, around the world, the stock market still rallied, even though economic features, economic sentiment, and overall sentiment in business were down. Now, this would, contrary to many, many fundamental beliefs, that because the economy was down, the stock market should be down. While in fact, that is definitely not always the case. A technical analyst would have been able to look at the price action and decide whether or not it's time to enter the market exit the market entirely, or short the market. A fundamental analyst may receive the data from said action in the market too late to actually act on it. And many times during intraday sessions, the fundamentals don't change at all, yet price seems to be very flexible. Now the two major criticisms of technical analysis is the self-fulfilling prophecy. The self-fulfilling prophecy is that because a lot of this data, a lot of chartists and technical analysts out there are using the same charts to trade the same patterns, of course they're going to be right. Another criticism is that charting patterns are almost completely subjective and that there's no study out there that has succeeded in mathematically quantifying any of them. They are all completely in the mind of the beholder. Now look at these two statements. They contradict each other, don't they? If all charting data is to be acted on in the same way, thus creating a self-fulfilling prophecy, yet be completely subjective where everyone has their own independent thesis, charting is more of an art, or a skill in fact, and each chartist has their own style. Some chartists may enter before the move, as a contrarian, some enter on the breakout, some enter after the first confirmation, and also each chartist time horizon is different. Some might be going in for a quick day trade, others may be swinging a position overnight, others may be adding to their long-term portfolio or their retirement account. A pattern will only work out if it's justified by the rule of supply and demand. Most chartists won't affect the price enough to make any difference at all in the market.
The second major criticism of technical analysis, can historical price data predict future market direction? Remember, charts tell us where the market has been, but they can't tell us where the market's going. One thing to remember, every known method of forecasting, weather, economic, business, fundamental, even human behavior, is based on historical data. There is no other way. Any time series forecasting utilizes past data to predict future outcomes. It's descriptive statistics versus inductive statistics. Descriptive statistics is the historical price movement, while inductive statistics is the inferences and assumptions made from the descriptive statistics or that data. And the first step toward any statistical analysis is to first gather all objective data, which is what a chartist does by looking at the chart. Therefore, by using technical analysis to predict future price movement, it's just simply a form of inductive statistics. Now, there's also two competing beliefs. Now, I'm sorry if this is very heavy. Uh, this is kind of how I'm dispelling a lot of the technical analysis naysayers out there. And these two economic theories go a little bit deeper into mathematics and how mathematicians and economists kind of use their models to give you or give us a reason to not look at technical analysis as any kind of indicator or as simply trying to dispel any belief in its use. The first is called the efficient market hypothesis. The efficient market hypothesis was introduced by economist Eugene Fama. And it's a hypothesis in financial economics that states that asset prices reflect all available information. And the direct implication that is gleaned from this hypothesis is that it's impossible to beat the market consistently on a risk adjusted basis since market prices should only react to new information. Now I've included the math equation if you wanted it here. Now since its publication in 1970, yeah, over 50 years ago, many have argued against this. Warren Buffett, implied that for the efficient market hypothesis proponents that luck is the only reason that some investors appear more successful than others. Charlie Munger also believes that the efficient market hypothesis is obviously roughly correct. An extreme commitment to the efficient market hypothesis would be bonkers claiming that the originators were seduced by an intellectually consistent theory that allowed them to do pretty mathematics, yet the fundamentals did not properly tie into reality. Now, I actually think that the efficient market hypothesis is a little bit closer to the first principle of technical analysis, and that is that the market discounts everything. The second competing belief is called the random walk theory. The random walk theory is another take on the efficient market hypothesis built on a weaker mathematical equation. In his book, A Random Walk Down Wall Street, Princeton economist Burton McKell said that technical forecasting tools such as pattern analysis must ultimately be self-defeating. The problem is that once such a regularity is known to the market, people will act in such a way that prevents it from happening in the future. McKell has stated that while momentum may explain some stock price movements, there isn't enough momentum to, to make excess profits. McKell has also compared technical analysis to astrology. Now, as a technical analyst myself and participant in the market, I can say that the efficient market hypothesis and random walk theories both ignore the realities of the market in that market participants are not completely rational and that the current price moves are not independent of previous moves. 
Ever hear that in a bull market, bad news is good news and good news is good news? And conversely, in a bear market, bad news is bad news and good news is bad news? How does the efficient market hypothesis or random walk theorists classify bull or bear markets if not with some use of historical price data? I would like to veer on the side of no one really knows anything and price is all there is. We can use technical analysis to see what market participants are doing with all available information they have and the chart reflects those actions that everyone who is affecting the market is taking. Therefore, even though everyone can't predict where the market is going, with technical analysis we may be able to predict the probability of certain price movements given historical price action. And we will go over these things in the next few lessons. But first, let's take a look at the basic components of a chart.